Hey guys, welcome back to Maverick Watch Reviews. Now this is going to be my last review of 2017, so I hope everybody has a very Merry Christmas and a safe New Year. And the reason why I'm doing this one last review is because a buddy of mine asked me, what is the best kind of entry-level G-Shock you can get? Now a lot of people are going to say, get the DW5600E, but this one right here is the one that I like, and I'll tell you why. So today we're going to review the Casio G-Shock 200 meter Solar Diver Mudman, model number G9300-1. So as usual, we'll open it up, look at the fit and finish, the features and the functions, the build quality, and then give you my overall impressions of kind of like this middle of the range uh, G-Shock. Now I'd also like to invite you to become a patron of mine on Patreon. Check out my Patreon link in the description field when you get a chance. You can give a one-time gift or a recurring monthly gift. It's entirely up to you. So here you go. Y'all have seen these boxes a million times. Man, this box is a little, little beat up too. Good grief. So you open it up. You get your warranty stuff. You get your manual. There you go. You've seen all this stuff before. Really, really boring. <laughs> so here we go. Again, here is the G-Shock 10. We'll take the watch out here. And we're going to do a little bit of a comparison between the Mud Man and the Range Man. And I'll tell you why I like this one more than just kind of like, kind of like the basement, the bargain basement DW5600E, which is not even solar powered, by the way, or, and, and it also doesn't have atomic power either. So let me see, let me put all this stuff back here and we will get started. All right. So, now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get some basic specs. Now, if you want the exact measurements, please refer to the manufacturer. I just like to give you all rough estimates. So let's try to get this case size here, which is gonna be a little bit hard because this case has got all sorts of ridges and bumps and stuff all over it. So let's go from here to here. And I'm probably sure this is gonna be nowhere near accurate. Yeah, 50 millimeters. It's probably a little bit bigger, <laughs> a little bit smaller. Uh, let's look at the thickness. You're looking at uh, about 17 millimeters thick. Let's do a lug to lug, which is even gonna be kind of harder here. Let's do a lug to lug, lug to lug, 52. And let's do a uh, resin strap measurement here. It's gonna start out probably a little bit thicker up top. Looking at uh, almost 27 millimeters up top and it's gonna taper down to, I'm guessing about 20, right down here. Yeah, 21, yeah, 21, there you go. So. Anyway, let me also give you the other specs on the uh, left-hand side of the screen. Uh, you're looking at 200 meters water resistant, which of course is 660 feet. It has a 3261 movement inside. It is solar powered. It has a compass and a thermometer. It has power save mode. Uh, of course, it has alarms and it has uh, world time. So this is kind of like, again, this is not the entry level G-Shock and it's not the, the most expensive G-Shock. For me, this really is kind of the middle of the road. Now let me show you the, um, the DW5600D up on the left-hand side of the screen. That's kind of like your entry level G-Shock. Uh, I wouldn't even say that. there's even actually models below that. But everybody associates the entry level G-Shock with being this watch right here, okay? Now you can also step it up for another probably, I don't know, 30 or $40 and you can get that uh, being solar powered and with atomic timekeeping. Now this one, this one also has a couple different models. Um, this is the American, actually the international release of this watch. This came out in about 2011. And if you notice, it does not have atomic timekeeping. The Japanese, the JDM version of this watch, which is the GW9300-1JF, that comes with a carbon fiber insert and atomic timekeeping. And I'll put that up on the left-hand side of the screen. So of course the Japanese, as usual, always keep the best stuff for themselves. They've always done that with electronics and I'm sure they probably always will. So that's that version of this watch. Now the most recent uh, iteration of this one is actually the black and gold. And I'll put that up on the left-hand side of the screen. Actually, I think they came out pretty much the same time. That's the most recent version of this one. And again, all the same features. That's an international release as well. And then they have another version that's not even really a mud man anymore. And I'm trying to see if I can find this thing real quick. It doesn't even come up under the, um, oh man, I'm trying to find it. 
Let me find it and I'll show you. There it is. Um, this is the, I think it's the G9000, I believe. Yeah, this is the G9000, okay? Now that doesn't even come up under the uh, Master of G um, designation on the Casio G-Shock website anymore, even though it's technically a Mudman, but it's not a Master of G Mudman. This is the uh, most affordable Master of G watch that you can get on Casio's site right now. Um, and again, the only things that it's missing from the range man right here, uh, this doesn't have atomic timekeeping and it's missing a couple sensors. This has the barometer and the altimeter. Uh, this has a compass and a, um, and a, a thermometer. This also has a compass and a thermometer. So you're missing barometer, you're missing altimeter, and you're missing atomic timekeeping on this watch. Same water resistance level, both are solar powered. Uh, both have really cool backlights. And I'll show you that in a minute. Even though this one's a little bit weaker than this one, they also have automatic backlights where if you tilt them 45 degrees and you have that setting on, the light will automatically come on between one and three seconds, depending on how you, uh, you set it up. They both have power save mode. They both have alarms and world time and stopwatches and all and timers and all that good stuff. Just the major difference between the Range Man and the Mud Man is atomic timekeeping and a couple sensors. Now this one, you can also get the Japanese version of this. That is actually more expensive because this watch came out, what, six years ago. That's actually more expensive than the Range Man. And that new one, that Japanese version, has less features than the Range Man does, which is a little bit silly to me. But if you want the Japanese version of this, uh, it did come out a, you know, a little you know, a while ago. So that's why it's going to be a little bit more expensive than the current range man. So that's why I'm picking this one again, not, you know, not the, the lowest end model and not definitely not the highest end model because you get some of these higher end G shocks and we're talking about the different collections like the Mr. G, uh, those Mr. G's, those are, um, those are GPS watches and all metal and God, those things are incredibly expensive. I'm sure they're really nice too. Um, but for me, this is probably the best way to get into a G shock. Uh, where you get some features again, but you don't get everything, but it's not like a, you know, a bargain basement type of watch. You get solar power. To me, solar power today is really, really the way that either solar or automatic personally for me is the way to go. You get solar power. I do wish, you know, if you really want, I mean, I do wish this had atomic timekeeping. If you want to spend another, you know, 50 bucks, step up to the Japanese made version, or even if you want to be even smarter about it, get yourself a range man. These come in multiple, multiple different variations. I think there's like, oh gosh, 10 versions of these. Uh, and half of those are Japanese domestic market versions only, which are really, really, really expensive. But you know, if you really, if you want kind of a good G-Shock, you don't need all the bells and whistles, get the Mudman. If you want some more bells and whistles, get the Range Man. And they're both really, really affordable watches. Now I'm trying to think uh, what else I wanted to tell you about this. Um, this also comes in multiple, multiple different uh, variations, different colors and stuff like that. I always like the positive display. I don't like negative display watches. Just, you know, for me, they're a little bit harder to read. And let me show you the negative display version of this on the left-hand side of the screen. To me personally, it's just harder to read. I like the positive display where it's black numerals on a, on a white background, actually technically a gray background. I don't like negative display watches. I just never have. That's just a personal preference. Uh, but there are multiple different versions of this watch, just like there are multiple different versions of the Range Man. So what else did I want to tell you? So let me go ahead and we'll kill the studio light here. And let me take off, oh, there you go, wrist check. I'm wearing my patty, my patty turtle. Let me, um, let's try this thing on and we'll go ahead and give you a, uh, a loom shot. Now this one's weaker than the Range Man. Actually, let me try this thing on real quick. And if you notice a couple other things, if you notice, you really do get what you pay for. Look at the tang. You get two tangs on this side. Basically, it's the same buckle, but this is two tangs. Look at the keeper, a stainless steel keeper with laser etched G-Shock on it, just a regular resin keeper. Look at the watch, the, uh, the case back. You have a metal, totally metal case back on the range man and a plastic cover over a metal case back. Um, the, the range man has you know, many, many more metal buttons and another thing about these buttons, these buttons are really, really hard to press. I know this is supposed to be mud resistant and all that good stuff, but these buttons are really, really hard to press. Whereas the range man, uh, you just simply just, you know, pretty gently press it and you're good to go. 
So, but they're both great watches. It just really depends on how much you want to spend. That's really kind of your deciding factor. You know, how many features and functions do I want and what I want to spend. So let's go ahead and try on the Mud Man and we'll give you a loom shot. And I'll show you also a loom shot of the Range Man as well. So let's try this thing on. Yep, the strap's a little bit stiffer, no big deal. Still pretty comfortable. But you can definitely tell a quality difference. So there you go. So there you go, I mean, it looks good. It almost from a distance looks like a Range Man a little tiny bit, especially that big window. If you look at the windows over there on the left-hand side, see the window, which will be probably around 10 o'clock. They both have a similar style of window. So from a distance, you can mistake the Mud Man for the Range Man. So anyway, so let me show you this and I'll show you, um, I'll show you the loom, the luminescence. Now I think both of these are set to automatically come on at 45 degrees in darkness. So let's kill the light. Let's kill the studio light and I'll show you. Okay. So let me switch, let me swap them around here. Okay. On the left hand side, there's the range man. Look how bright that light is. Stays on for three seconds. Now look at the mud man. Not too bad. I mean, it's it's bright enough to read what you have to read. Let me activate it again. There you go. Not too bad, but the range man light, I'm trying to get them at the exact same angle and stuff here. All right, let's try this. All right, turn off. All right, there we go. There we go. See, it's just the brightness difference. Both still legible. There you go. So there you go. I mean, it's bright enough to read what you have to read, but I do like the fact that the range man is definitely brighter. Definitely brighter. One more time. There you go. And this is a setting you set inside the watch. And I'll show you real quick what I'm talking about. For those that don't know how to do it, and it's the same on both watches, by the way. Let me get these things back in focus here. There we go. Now, if you look in the upper... Oh gosh, can you see that right there where my finger is? It says LT, that stands for light. And all you do is you press and hold the light button until that either disappears or appears. See, it just went away. Now the automatic light is not active. I press and hold for what, five seconds? Now that now it comes back. And that's the same for both of these watches. So again, just feature differences. Um, this is heavier, it's a little bit bigger as you can see. It's a little bit bigger, much more metal all over the watch. This I don't think it has any metal on it at all. No. Nope. Um, uh, triple sensor, uh, dual sensor, and atomic timekeeping and no atomic timekeeping, barometer, altimeter, just compass and um, thermometer. So there you go. This has a thermometer as well. So it really depends, like I said, what y'all want to spend on it. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else I wanted to tell you about these. This you know short video turned out to be an average length video, which they, no <laughs> they normally do. I've got something really, really cool coming up uh, after the new year. I'm waiting for it to get here. Uh, it's It's been en route for a while and it's driving me nuts to wait for it. But it's coming in, you know, probably, probably the first week of January, I'm guessing. So uh, anyway, make sure you stay tuned for that. If you like this video, please click on like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do so. I always really, really appreciate all the new subscribers, and I've gotten a ton of them lately. Guys, I really, really appreciate that. Uh, make sure you, whenever you subscribe to click on the bell notification to make sure you get all of the notifications from my channel so you won't miss anything out. Uh, miss anything out. So you won't miss anything. Uh, and of course, I'll put the, um, the uh, price for this in the description field, and I'll put a couple of the other models of the mud man for you so if you want to get a different model you can go ahead and do that but to me guys this is my personal pick to kind of enter the g-shock world again this is the most affordable master of g the g-shock makes <laughs> but that's kind of where you enter in the big boy g-shocks now they do have some g-shocks that are really really inexpensive that you can get they don't have any of the uh the solar power features or there's no atomic timekeeping um, no automatic lights, stuff like that. Most of those are just going to be battery powered, um, not solar powered. So anyway, so this is going to be my pick. Again, this is the Mudman. This is the, what is it, the G93-1. Uh, and guys, that's about it. I hope, Like I said, hope everybody has a really Merry Christmas. Please be safe on New Year's. There's a whole bunch of wackos out there on New Year's. And uh, guys, until the next review, I will see you next year. Take care. Bye-bye.